Oh shit, we've been streaming this. No, I'm joking. Yeah, no. Horrible stuff said on Twitch. Not even the most horrible stuff. <laughs> Alright, I think I just need to clear my throat a little bit. That's why I got the water. That and to remember to take my pills. Which actually, give me a minute. I'll just... No, I did that. Sorry. They told me to stop taking them in the middle of the day, start taking them in the morning. That's why I took it at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. I have to break the habit that I've been doing for the last month and start doing what oh, they yeah. told me yesterday. I understand. All right. <laughs> uh, uh. Still, still sleepy. You doing a thing there still? No, I said go ahead. Oh, okay. I, I, I figured I must there was a problem that. when you said I thought, like, you were... and I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> I thought you were doing like a mouthwash or something for a second when you were like one second. <laughs> no, I was choking a little bit after I took a drink. <laughs> That's why I said, oh, oh, one second. And then I went, okay, go ahead. And I thought you okay. were just gathering your thoughts. So we've been well, recording. Okay, well, <clears throat> after that smooth uh, introduction, let me go ahead and... um. Let's recenter a little bit. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another Stone Faced Reactions. I'm Griffin, this is Theta, and we are watching more Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. So, last we left off, I believe our heroes went to space, had a fight in low Earth orbit, and then did a ridiculous maneuver around a asteroid and flung themselves to safety. Is that about right? Uh, well, they flung themselves past the ship. Uh, was trying to take them down. The one that shot at them a whole bunch and never actually hit them once, or had mm -hmm. any, you know, effect on them. I think that, that still was, missed at point blank range. Yeah, I think that was Orca's ship, uh, which yes, yeah, what was his name? Toby? It's not Toby. Toddy? Toddy? I I think it is Toby. Uh, Fat Hitler. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Fat Hitler, the one that sold them out. To, uh, to, oh, I think no, actually no, I I think. I think I missed it the first time, and I thought that it was Orca who got sold out to, but I when uh, I went back for editing, mm -hmm. uh, you remember Red Guy who keeps bashing his head into walls every time he gets upset? Yes, yes uh, I do. That's the guy, I believe, that uh, Fat Hitler uh, sold them out to, and then that guy contacted Orca, because we have a scene of... Somebody uh, talking to him, saying, "Hey, we have information about Princess's name. I can't remember, and I'm not going to bother trying to because you've called her Princess too many times. It's all that's in my head. <laughs> uh, we have information about that, which is what I think uh, Fat Hitler told to them for money, and then uh, that guy contacts Orca for a joint measure plan." And then he also contacts the uh, investigators. Which is why everybody's out there all at the same time. Right, it, it's one big mess. Everyone makes their shot and completely misses it. It's hard, to, it's hard to tell in our reaction last time because that episode was all action and I, we have a limited amount of space for what we can fit in from the actual source. And I had to make some tough choices, which is why I think I probably cut out all of the asteroid bit because I was so angry that nothing was happening. <laughs> to be fair, you don't need to imagine a whole lot when it comes to this. There's a rope, there's an asteroid, and there's a ship. Put the three things together and you have your scene. I mean, you say that, but during that scene, I thought something different was happening until it actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> oh yeah, you thought they were going to throw it at them, which would have been amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, uh, what is it, centrifugal <clears throat> force? That the they shot the asteroid with the ship. I mean, with the ship, with the the rope thing. And then if they f went flew on past it, and then did like a, a circle, like an orbital circle around it, that the force would pull against the asteroid, and the asteroid would then also circle, and then fling backwards, and they would just let go of it at that point. Right. Which is what but I like thought the, would happen. 
Right, but the only problem with it is equal opposite forces. Yeah, they'll they'll impart force to it equal to the force of them moving, but they are far less massive than the asteroid. So the asteroid is now moving at like an inch a second. Right. Very threatening, which it's the absurdity of the whole thing. Really. It's still a moving object at one point, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not what happened. So obviously, <laughs> I was wrong. But I have the but expectations of Why do they have an asteroid anime? hanging out in Mars orbit? Low Mars orbit at that. Is well, that actually one of the moons? I don't think that they slingshotted... No, because that was way too small to be at one of the moons. Um, mm. I have read a number of series of books. Uh, the book series, uh, The Mars Trilogy by Kim Stanley Robinson. It's an amazing mm. book series, <clears> and... <throat> They do a lot of stuff uh, with the moons there, like hollowing one out and making it into a uh, a base for ships arriving from Earth and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. But those, again, so obviously I don't know the scientific nature of them, they're depicted as being far larger than were in this anime. Uh, mm -hmm. I would assume, if I had to guess, that maybe they're the remains of some of the moons, since we know that Earth's moon has been destroyed, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. I believe I left that bit in the edit with the conversation of will we see the moon and we had that whole conversation about if it's like uh, Cowboy Bebop where the gate disaster caused the moon to explode or whatever. It blew up every moon. <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know what the calamity was because that scrolled by super fast on uh, on episode three. I want to say. Yeah, we, we have very bare information on it so far, but maybe we'll talk about more. Yeah, we know that there was a calamity, and we know that it was a strong enough thing to maybe destroy a moon, Earth's moon. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, for the episode, so last time, it's they gives the impression that they gave a clean getaway, and that they're going to go on their space route, which is ridiculously linear. Uh, we talked about that before. But um, I think it was episode they, four where we saw the whole and discussed why there's so many lines yeah. of space routes. Right, and my problem right now is that they're still in space, and they're moving along a known path. The ships can all turn around and start chasing them, and that's what I think is probably going to happen this episode. They'll go, well, they're still following us. If we stop for any reason, then they catch up. Well, they were doing that last time as one was chasing it together and shooting at it. It's very much the episode <clears> seven <throat> scenario. The fleet's following us, they're shooting at us. We can't jump away, they'll follow us. Is this is this just a trope for episode sevens for you? Uh we're on episode six right now. Oh, dang. Okay. Well I'm talking about Star Wars episode seven. Um <laughs> I don't know. I think they might just skip past all this. But they just just don't get chased. Because uh, mm -hmm. you remember the guy who the the guy in red that I just uh, talked about a little while ago, he's dead. They killed him last yeah. episode. This uh, with a, another spear, as given to the guy by the guy who is now sitting in uh, Commander Crank's mech. Oh right, yeah, they stole his mech. <laughs> they stole his mech. Yeah, because the guy who I think is probably now my guy said. Wait, I recognize those reactor signatures. That's Commander Crank's mech! And then he goes whole ham trying to take it out and fails. A reactor signature. Oh, gosh. Well, unfortunately... Like you can just look at it. <laughs> unfortunately, well, I don't know. They kind of It looks different than it did before. I think when it was on Mars, mm -hmm. it looked green. had like a whole red sash motif thing. You also got to remember, it, it gray, got ripped yeah. open, too. Uh, <clears> no, I think it was brown when we see it in space. Um, but it has mm -hmm. a whole, it got ripped open and everything, so I think it's repainted, and they, yeah, yeah, you remember, mm -hmm. um, I think it's another part we had to clip out of the, uh, the edit, uh, two episodes prior, the mechanic was talking about how he was still fixing it. Ah, and okay, we, so they did mention it, and we completely ignored it. No, 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 we didn't ignore it, we had a, we had a bit about talking if they had two Gundams or just one Gundam, and then I think <laughs> also in a bit they got clipped out, uh, we, uh, uh, I thought they had two Gundams, and then you no, I for some there was a whole two Gundams, one Gundam thing going on, and I think we misidentified it as a Gundam when it's actually just another mech suit. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a conversation that also happens that we cut cut out. This is a good part to bring up things that we get cut out of the edits, so just people know that and understand that we do see them and that we do understand that what's happening. Um, 
uh, one of the investigators, the main investigator, is like peering down the battlefield, and mm -hmm. he's looking at the uh, the Gundam, and he's recognizing um, reactor signatures. Apparently, that's how you uh, that's how you identify mechs in this uh, universe is reactor signatures. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, that uh, that mech doesn't uh, doesn't correspond to any known mech type, and uh, it's how they identify mechs. So I guess every reactor has a unique signature. <coughs> And that one doesn't uh, correspond to any of the mechs in our records. And and then they eventually find, oh, wait, it's Barbados. Oh, that's ancient. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's how we, that's when we had the whole, um, the DeLorean and Back to the Future Part 2. You know, land on it. No, that thing's made of sheer metal. It'll rip right through us. <laughs> that one Gundam is worth like 50 mechs, but I guess in the military uh, industrial complex, having 50 mechs is better than having one Gundam. Yeah, though I think what they've said is that um, uh, it has to use child soldiers and it has to use ones you've experimented on, and these are terrible things, so they stopped doing it. I don't know about that one. I, I don't know if they put... What is it called? It's not the Veritas system. It's something that starts with a V. The thing that they put on their backs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they put that into the mech or not. Because I know they put it on themselves. Mm-hmm. Because like they did the operation themselves, it's the the government and the mercenary organization didn't do that to them. They did that to themselves. I think to make themselves more valuable. Uh, yeah, you could be right on that too. They had a conversation about it where Orca <clears throat> is uh, telling um, the princess. About oh yeah, it. they did. You you were actually completely correct. The mechanic even goes, "Well, we ripped out uh, one of these workers and installed it into the Gundam." Right, so I don't. That's not a part of it, and uh, so yeah, it and... actually is better than it even was before because now it has this uh, system where the person operating it now is better than everyone else, and it's a Gundam where apparently it's invulnerable to damage too. Right, and the uh, the lead investigator, when he's like scanning down the way, he uh, points it out on the um, the jets that are on the back, how they're more damaged than anything else on the uh, the Gundam, because. Mm -hmm it's not used to operating the way that it's being controlled. Like, oh, yeah. it's operating like an animal, and an animal doesn't have jump jets or something like that, he says. <laughs> it's a bit of a silly metaphor, but I guess we get what he's getting across. Again, I think it's part that I had to clip for time. Yeah. Like, I, I have him looking down the sights at the mech and, you know, reacting to it, but I think I had to cut out that specific mm -hmm. animals don't have jump jets. Well, now that we've clarified what animals do and don't have, let's watch the episode. Did he die? Stop it! No! 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 Eugene, no. My poor shit! Oh no, they keyed the car. It's the guy! So we just watched the intro, and I just something jumped out at me there. What's is that we on? saw two of them in a cornfield as young bed, kids, I, which I guess means that I they've been you it was just a scratch. here you since they were kids. So never mind, that really sounds dumb when I say it out loud. They're orphans. Ready, Where else would they have been? <laughs> This time I'll get that little fool. We won't pursue. Why not? Calm yourself. You don't pursue. Death death left They're after those meddling kids. Have patience, my friend. So what? Are we just gonna let him go then? Of course yeah. not. I mean, the military Thanks commander's the gone, so now these guys are operating on their own. Adelia Ina Bernstein is aboard that ship. And that means and we saw this thing. at the end. Sail head for I left it in the edit, specifically it. because I was shouting about get out of Commander Crank's suit, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, they are doing a chase. So far, I'm not seeing an Ahab wave reaction. Well, yeah, they're the cops. And our patrols haven't reported anything for a while. Guess we're in the clear. But we can't afford to. You're in space. You have direct line of sight to what they're doing. Rest for the weary around here. Uh, it depends on the uh, luminosity of the space around them. The That's why you can't the see the next worker? galaxy from Earth. Me? Mobile suits are protected yeah. by If there was no luminosity, in fact, from stars and surrounding, you know, then objects, and you could just see Give forever. Give me a second, would you? Records are practically so worthless. your science second. Old man! <laughs> Want me to check the reactor would core? Would you cool your jets already? I haven't even touched one of these suits since I was a little kid. I was trained as a mobile worker specialist. Well, I guess this machine was made a pretty long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. This thing should be in a museum. But it was brand new during the Calamity War. In fact, oh, so says the other than the ones anyway. Gellerhorn uses, most mobile suits are antiques. I'm just obsessed with the lip syncing. It was all just a little bit off for him. Yeah, but I mean, that's what you do with anime. <laughs> years ago. I know. Back then, 
There were enough of these things to destroy it entirely. And they nearly did. A Gundam frame, you said? Oh, hey, that was the context. Yes. And yeah, no, that's what I said. That's why I raised a finger real quick, sir. They They're talking about everything we've been talking about so far. Calamity War. This unit's name was Barbatos. And now Calamity War, too. I know I've heard the name. You sure it's not a mistake? Why aren't you the wearing a shirt? The pattern of the reactor. This is the bridge. Because he has to show off his injuries. Both of which were specially designed for that machine. They're like a fingerprint. So despite its age, it's still got some punch. The reactor, like a fingerprint. What'd I say? True, it is very powerful. You must be hungry, huh? Yeah, piloting always makes me work up an appetite. Uh, about that, are we gonna be fighting a lot? Probably so, because there are still a bunch of people who are coming after Kudelia. Mikazuki, aren't you afraid? Not really. Why not? I mean, if oh, you're man. not careful, did the you twins get on the ship there. or did they not? I don't think they did, did they? <laughs> Uh, um, no, I think they're still on Mars. Damn it. Because I have this. They were the most adorable things on the show. Right, but you're not going to bring the kids well, along for that. Why? They're we all kids. Griffin? Agreed. They're clearly <laughs> under the custody of the old woman, though. She's probably 16 or 17. The main princess, whatever. It won't be easy with Gallarhorn gunning for us. And run of the mill isn't going to quite cut it. We need someone strong enough to watch our backs, and crazy enough to take care of things on Mars. We put Mars Sun on the map. Away. Also, oh, gosh, Earth. If the orbits, there we go. They can't be. That cannot be that, actual. It has to be representational. That's our ticket. Because otherwise, the Sun is very it's close to Earth. Also, pointedly, I want to point out. Like and that's exactly why we need to contact them. Uh, Venus, Mercury, not worthy Ross. being on the map. If they were escorting us, Gallahorn might think twice about attaching. Kind of focus again. what's important. That sounds great. Which means we never colonized Venus. Good point. What makes you think they'll even want to talk to kids like us anyway? Got to breathe a little atmosphere on Mars. That you can just walk around in and no atmosphere no suits. Off the table mm -hmm. for now. Venus we off the table. We can't go back home. We either go to Jupiter or we rot out here. As far as finding someone. Is sorry, I don't know. Might have to do it ourselves. Jupiter is on the map. Mind. Amazing. That is uh, such it? a long journey. I've been having trouble contacting the guys on Mars, but she got me through without any problem at all. What did you do? I simply utilized the Ariadne that Gallerhorn controls. Also, the I'm Ariadne. a spy, and I could do Never that. Heard of it. Even when the effects of an Ahab wave hinder their ship's radar system, <coughs> the Ariadne acts as a guidepost and allows them to navigate properly. By using the relay points, or cocoons, that it's composed of, long-distance communication is possible. That's great, but won't Gallerhorn know we're using their system? All of the communications are encrypted, so it shouldn't be any issue. For your Star Wars <laughs> nerds out there, this is the Herosian Network from Star Trek Voyager. Help from now on, <laughs> provided that Miss Cudelia approves. As a computer okay. scientist, I have some issues Glad with uh, possible man-in-the-middle attacks on this, Welcome given that they own it, but... How are they going to know Understood. something's happening? Exactly how Voyager used the Herosian network. It. Miss, uh... Fumitan Admos. I never knew. It's pretty. <laughs> I don't want a line to end off. It's pretty. <laughs> Kids. Oh, hey, Cordelia. What are you doing? Catching my breath. I just discussed our next All right, Mikazuki, don't be an matters. asshole. Uh-huh. I was kind of surprised you well, weren't there to participate. Walking down the hallway with the second part of the triangle. It's just not my speed. I don't like stuff like that. I wouldn't understand it anyway. But oh, the way the strap was over his back that? and the way the uh, railing was behind him. I thought he was holding a shotgun. It looked like he had a shotgun strapped over his shoulder. Uh, guns on spaceships. Worst ideas. I was going to say comments about it, but then he moved forwards and the railing behind him didn't move. So it's like, oh, okay, it's better. Well, I mean, he is our high-functioning sociopath, so, you know, may maybe he was just casually carrying a gun. Yeah, he famously has a gun on him most of the time. There's an asshole piling my, my mech. Kind of busy. I'll leave it here. Mikazuki. It's your McDonald's hamburger. Let's train with the simulator after this. Okay. So, are we 
gonna try and meet with that Tewaz person? So, they're in space, on, some places on the ship company, they don't have person, gravity. They it? have it here, yes. and they have it there. So, is that gonna be like, uh, so could I they do high gravity training? Could they do a deep Z mode? Maybe it's the density of the ship sort of thing? really important. The closer you are to the center of the ship, the more dense it is, the more likely it is to have gravity. Or maybe the reactor creates gravity. Maybe they're spinning the whole way. Ah, uh, they didn't show that before, and they were walking around. Remember, they were walking around on the bridge during the fight, and the external shots of the ship didn't spin. Yeah. What's the matter with what you're wearing? Space magic. Yeah, maybe they just have. Yeah, maybe they just have graviton control. Freedom for the Martian. You are a poor girl from the country. That is the sole reason I decided to. Well, yeah, you knew that. Remember, she begged to come on as a chef. But she wants a dress now. Subdivided nations of Earth were united. She's competing with the princess for the main character's love. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Except part of the triangle. I see. While following that, all of the outer spheres, like Mars and Jupiter were divided among the different economic blocks and then put under their administration. The Crise Autonomous Region came under the jurisdiction of the Arbral Economic Block. But thanks to the unfair transplanetary economic pact from the pioneer days, people living there were unjustly exploited for many uh, uh, that's a little gruesome. So the blue guys are not as good guys as we may have thought. In the hopes of reforming this Space cops, plan. also bad. And well, that's what the blue guys. Tokonosuke Makanai, the, the leader Criso of Umbra, Federation, agreed for the first time to hold talks on this issue. If all goes well, we'll have won economic independence for Mars. That is my goal, and I truly believe it will lead to the happiness of everyone who lives there. Unless the Criso Federation the are also the red guys, and we just saw the blue guys because okay. it was a police operation. So you plan on mm -hmm. going to Earth because you want to make us happy? Uh, uh, <laughs> Yes, that's my intention. Mikazuki, did it take you five episodes to figure that out? This thing really took a I don't know that there. he cares. Remember, he is a psychopath. <laughs> All right, stop moving your Could literally just be making conversation. Yes, Thanks for your hard work. I don't know what to say here. I'll say the obvious oh, thing. I appreciate it. Hey, stop what you're doing and come have some food, you guys. Yes, sir. Nice. I'm starving. There's no need and that's to how. Here, Everything on the mecha it. gets ruined. Oh, Crumbs lot, floating into electronics. Do you want me to help? Ah, uh, yes. Here? Just let me yeah. eat my cornbread and Reuben sandwich. Ah, uh, mm, mm. die on the spaceship and no right gravity. Now. now, guys, yeah. remember to put your hair nets back on. Yeah, okay. I understand. <laughs> here, I'm gonna open up this soda <laughs> after shaking it up. Mm. How could that be? I mean. You operate this complicated machine all the time. One spare ball well, flies into an air intake valve. <laughs> it's basically the same We're as We're all doomed. Worker. The rest is instinct. Uh, really? Yeah, I don't know why you're so surprised. Oh, hold on. So he is an animal. You go to school? Yeah, no, again, that's what the guy said. He moves like an animal. That's why the other guy who's all hurt and uh, shirtless well, couldn't hit him. He makes a specific survive, comment so about that, time for thinking that, oh, if that was me out there and I didn't see what I'm seeing now, I would so think that my mech was bad. I had no idea. I finished the deliveries. Do you know how to read, Atra? Yeah, the shopkeeper taught me. Mikazuki, I was just wondering, would you maybe like to learn how to read and write? What? I would be glad to show you. Cause knowing how that can be is really useless to me out. as Goku as learning to drive. They need to at least read to understand the controls. Like no, because remember, it's all through his back. They took Thank out you. those controls. So I'll be able Literally, to all he's controlling is huh? more power, yes, less power. Exactly. Me too. I'd like to learn if you wouldn't mind having another student. Think we could this is very you. much Please, the original Gundam right yeah, now. I want to learn how. Where the ship, oh, yeah? the main mm -hmm. ship is filled with I, children, I, and they've got to be I, like uh, social workers as well as military commanders. And now they're going to start a school. If you're okay with it, then let's all study together. Awesome. Oh, this is so cool. We're going to study. <laughs> yeah, that's the right attitude, you guys. Said no kid oh, ever. I can teach you. <laughs> you have any questions? I mean, I guess if you've been Wait, an you orphan minor for, uh, for ages and had no opportunity to learn anything, maybe you'd be more appreciative. I am very confused by that sentence. An orphan minor. Now, they weren't actually minors, so do you just mean an orphan child? Well, I mean, 
what was their job out there? It looked like they were digging stuff up half the time. They were working for a mercenary organization, so I don't assume the mercenary organization was mining. Yeah. Either way, I'm sure they would appreciate a change of face. Would you mind watching things here for a minute? No, not at all. Thanks. Oh, hey. I'll be right back. Let's see what she gets up to alone on the bridge with nobody else. I see. She glares ah, at the screen. <laughs> I didn't expect that idiot to be this useless. Uh, the man behind the curtain is just amused by the situation. Sir, we know that you engaged a civilian organization outside Crise under Coral's orders. Your company planned to defeat them with your Coral being the guy who's dead power, now. But that plan went south rather quickly. Also, I think he's sitting in his uh, his bridge area. Was it due to the enemy's mobile suit? Yes, sir. I want to hear your honest impression. How would you gauge his abilities? Well, at first, I was surprised a civilian organization even had a mobile suit. But then... Tell me how you sucked out there. Started, it turned into a different kind of surprise. You remember, his left-hand man specific. also failed. So. Mm -hmm. It was something I never experienced in training. The mobility, the reaction speed, their tactics caught us off guard. And that's when we... I see. This certainly helped. That's all for now. You are dismissed. Specialist Major, sir, I have a favor to ask. Go ahead. I wasn't good enough out there, and my superior officers paid the price. I can't return to Mars in disgrace like this. And therefore, I request permission to join the Pursuit Force. It's my man! Please give me this chance, sir. <laughs> yes, antagonist energy. I'll think about it. Look, if I can't Thank have you, Commander you'll have third, uh, Crank... You can go now. I can have the guy who's dedicated to avenging Commander Crank. <laughs> yes. You'll have just a su succession of characters, each Damn trying to get revenge for the next one. You Mikazuki, that is some terrible you. posture. Awesome. <laughs> well, look, it's because he can't shoot it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad, but a couple of your letters are kind of backwards. See? And this one, too. Huh? <laughs> okay. I knew there was something wrong with it. Uh, you literally have the example above, though. Writing isn't your thing. I can't wait to tell. I think, like, if it was uh, Japanese lettering, it would make more sense for being more complicated. I, I don't think so. Again, you're just copying the things on the line above. The adults are all gone. We're gonna need to man up and do our best to contribute to Tekken. It's not even about understanding what the letters mean or anything yet. It's just writing the thing above it. He's the leader of all the other children here. He's doing his best so he can catch up to the rest of us. Wait, isn't that spelled with a D? But it's pronounced with a Z, right? What They're word? already on lesson what, 25. What word are they possibly spelling now huh? that it's pronounced okay. with a Z, but spelled with a D? Come on, let's go. Well, you're gonna listen to what it was just said and try and figure it out. Watch where you're running. I it won't happen again, Bob. I don't know. It's a mystery. Right. Sorry, sir. Orga. Uh, the only answer I can think of is these nuts. Without some kind of connection, it would be almost impossible to negotiate with Tewas. Whose eyes? Mika. That kid's amazing. Through the years. He's a psycho. He'll get me if I fail. Literally not what I thought. That kid's uh. That kid's um a monster? No, he's amazing. Not where I thought that was going. Asking, Orga. What are we gonna do next? And what are some of the new things that you're gonna show me today? I can't let him down. Quite literally not what I see in those eyes. eyes. The last five times I've seen those eyes like that, as it's always been, concerned. Hey Orca, where do I point I my gun completely next? completely fearless. As it stands now, everyone's lives and future depend on Tekadin. Um, excuse me, Miss Cadelia? Yeah, because you're making it dependent on Tekadin. <laughs> uh, the first two are... Not these. Can you see the difference? Um, An Alea Vignana system. I'm such a small child. He'll be the backup Gundam pilot. Oh, it's cool, isn't it? My problem here is that is. they've given all these kids the all system. Kinds of work thanks to this little baby. The operation hurts, but I think I'll have it done again. Ugh, once was enough but they only have two people. mechs that use them. I knew you were a coward, Elgar. I think it's because they work with the mobile you workers. 
never be like I can't Mr. believe this is a reality. Because again, they don't have to know anything about the yeah, systems. They just plug in and start using yeah, it. I can't recall any of the uh, the no mobile chance. workers having any of them on them, though. You? What you they mean? totally did. The mobile workers were the wheeled things that they used back on Mars. Not uh, Damn, any of the Gundam. Not uh, any of the mecha. Got that yeah, right. exactly. And those they like specifically showed off like plugging into them. Tech it in will be unstoppable that. and you'll be able to live that dream of yours. Maybe you'll get to grow a personality. What the hell? Yeah, I was about to say, do I hear the me. ending music Another starting to play? Is it already that time? They they do it. Do you think it could be Gallerhorn? I don't know. It just doesn't it, feel it, like it's been twenty four minutes. Him? Wait, that's President Maruba. I'll have your head <laughs> what? You had better give back my will of the wisp. Do you Damn understand me? What's he doing here? Because I bought it. Okay, so now we know who the cowboy is from the uh, next time on, which is Maruba, which is a name we've heard before, and I can't remember when, but I know we've heard it before, and we also saw his love interest girlfriend in a full-on face shot. Um. Uh, but we've seen her in the intro as well. She's the one that leans over and gives him a kiss and then, I guess, falls into his lap or something. Hmm. You yeah. were about to say something before we hit the intro. Um. Outro. Yeah, d didn't they go out and buy the ship? I, I guess they didn't really clarify what happened, so maybe they're about to backtrack that a little bit. Uh, we had uh, the scene where... God, I can't remember his name. Episode two, the guy that we met at the very beginning, mm -hmm. um, uh, him out in the field, and Orca giving him his papers, saying, "Hey, you're free men now. You're not just uh, trash or whatever he says." And uh, then we see them walking through a spaceport uh, with the um, let me say auditor, what's his, uh, the accountant, and the assumption yeah. is that they bought the ship. And then you even see them later on on the ship floating in space uh, before it even uh, approaches anybody, them getting it all ready. So it, mm -hmm. it was either abandoned or it was sold to them. And then now the president of... Of something is now very mad at them. I mean, my assumption is <clears throat> Mars, but I think that's pretty high up. Also, <laughs> it just says president. Like, maybe it's the president of the military organization that they took over. And, like, I only care about my spaceship? I don't know. It's very... It, the, the president of Earth, they sold Joe Biden's spaceship. <laughs> um, but also, yeah, at the very end there, they uh, detected that they were being chased by another ship. Which was going to happen. Makes sense. Well, I don't know that it's the guys in blue. Because, again, we saw at the very end, the next time on... Uh, God, I've yeah. already forgotten his name. Maruba? Well, I, was that it? I think... Yeah, Maruba. Yeah, that Maruba. maybe Maruba's there, and maybe who we thought was the no, we thought Noblis guy was the guy all along, and clearly that's not him because they keep referring to Noblis, but this is Maruba. This is somebody else, mm -hmm. and apparently it seems like he's not on their side, because again, also on the next time on, we saw them getting shot at by missiles. So if Maruba is there, and Maruba's on the other ship, and Maruba's firing missiles at them. Maybe not a good guy. Right. So, it's not Gallerhorn after them right now, like we just said. Oh, so, also... Gallerhorn definitely is... Go ahead. Uh, get, we have Gallerhorn and... Shoot, was, I'm already now I'm forgetting the C name. The blue guys. I forgot. <laughs> uh, they, we, we just learned their whole history. <laughs> it was a thing that we watched. The blue guys, they were putting down... They had Their organization name started with a C. Uh, you got me. Well, now we have Gallarhorn and the other guys, which we already already had before, but now they have a name of which we've totally forgotten. Yep. This is why we uh, probably should keep notes. It's not like I'm not prepared to keep notes. I'm just not doing just, it. I'm just so engaged. Uh, but let's see. So they were thinking that they were going to go to Earth, and so now the second half of any of this is going to be, well, they already know you were going to go to Earth eventually, so now they've prepared, and they're just waiting for you. And that's going to be a finale kind of thing at some point. Well, but I think they're still sending a pursuit, so there'll still be more of them in the action, I think. We're only six episodes in, and we know the season has 25 episodes, so it doesn't really feel <laughs> like a finale. Yeah. Well... 
it'll get there eventually. Well, I assume that we're going to arrive at Earth in the next <clears throat> episode. I thought we would arrive at Earth this episode. It didn't seem like there was a lot of shit to do in the middle, but I guess we are pulling a very uh, Gurren Lagann type uh, scenario where a lot of shit's going to happen along the way, or we're going to do a lot of character introspection along the way, so that mm -hmm. when we get to our location, we can do a lot of action without feeling like we're missing out on what these characters are about. Right. Uh, the series is definitely settling into a pattern where there's low tension and then high tension, and that's perfectly fine. We we now have a very nice, steady curve. We can predict what's happening and go, well, okay, so now we're going to relax after we almost died, say why things are important again, and then we're all going to die again. Or at the very least, there's uh, action tension, and then there's character tension. Because mm -hmm. we get the development of, okay, this character is going to betray us, or we suspect this character is going to betray us. This character betrays yeah. us. Action, 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 action. Yeah, you got to set up your payoffs tensions. for later. Right, right. This character is a psychopath. This character shoots somebody in the head. This character betrays us. Uh, <clears throat> payoff. The dead character's subordinate comes into play. Action scene. The guy who betrayed us, their people are in the action. Mm -hmm. Action scene. Action's over. Cool down. Betrayal, betrayal. Shooting ahead. Action! Yup. And it goes up and down like that. But now we've set up that Mikazuki is learning how to read, and then in the next episode, he's going to win a fight because he manages to read something on one of the opposing uh, mobile suits. Or he'll set up an ambush. <laughs> I think it's more likely that he'll set up an ambush by writing something down and luring somebody. I don't know. <laughs> when you say Mikazuki wins a fight based on his skills, I'm getting a very Ender's Game vibe of Mikazuki in the shower room kills a kid by breaking his neck. Something like that. Oh, Which I think I think was in the book Ender's Game and not in the movie Ender's Game. It right? definitely wasn't in the movie. It I think they did something else. They may have had some kind of fight, but not not the oh, yeah, uh, murder yeah. of the other kid. Yeah, in the book, he's yeah. very much pitted against everybody. Is like, hey, mm -hmm. you should all hate this kid just to make Ender better, to the point where he has to kill a kid in the shower. Yup. Just to survive. Spoilers Ender's Game Ender's is messed game. up, by the way. <laughs> yeah, spoilers for Ender's Game, a book that's been out how long? I don't know. I mean, at the same time, Ender's Game is messed up. You you mean the, the weird relationship Ender has with his sister? Uh, I'm glad that's not in the movie. <laughs> I was talking more tricking kids into committing genocide, but, you know. Well, I mean, it was either genocide against them or genocide against us. Uh, I think the later books make it more clear that that wasn't necessarily the case. And that this is a bad, terrible thing that happened. Well, it was a bad, the terrible was thing. Into doing so. It was a bad, terrible thing because it is genocide. Not, it was a bad, terrible thing because we had to defend ourselves against them. Because yeah, remember, they attacked us first. I'm from Buenos Aires, and screw the aliens. Well, I mean, it's very much <coughs> indicated that, uh... Sorry, now I'm realizing that I might be getting two different book series mixed up in my head. Because <laughs> my problem is that I'm imagining one character from one book as a different character, and I don't know if I'm getting mixed up. Next hey, you remember time, when this... Starship Troopers. So, yeah, you remember when this Gundam series was about Gundam? <laughs> Uh, you know, sci-fi mixes together and inspires each other, like uh, abusing kids constantly. <laughs> well, there's another great series called Hot Gate, and I would recommend people watch that or watch that, read that, which is all about uh, we get uh, subjugated by at least two alien species at once, and then we effectively negotiate our way through trade out of it by one guy who used to be a cartoonist selling rights to old movies to another alien species with high technology so that Earth gets high technology and then can then fight its way back out. That is that is amazing as a premise, at least to me, because I love these stories where humans are uh, win by doing something else completely different. Th we don't win a war, we get decked because we're stupid, but uh, we, we know how to sell movie rights. Eventually we <laughs> win great. the war. Eventually we win the war because we have the technology of another race that effectively mm -hmm. lost the war, but we're so isolated, like there's only one way into our system for our gate mm -hmm. sort of thing. And we do something that all the other races don't do, which is we turn asteroids into giant mobile fighting bases. So they're all using giant ships and whatnot, and we're using 
almost a moon-sized objects. Like right, hard yeah. to destroy a giant rock. Well, yeah, it's more like okay, they're gonna fire seventeen thousand missiles at us, but you know, we're the size of eh. a moon. That's that's basically our armor is the outside. Oh, of the are moon. you gonna put another crater on our asteroid? Oh no, say it isn't so. <laughs> I, I mean, they they basically do it. Basically, like we fired a ton of nukes at the thing. We took out the, the like the space the drive that moves the asteroid. Is literally them doing, I can't remember what it's called, the fire a nuke out the back and the explosion will push us forwards. Mm -hmm. That's how it moves. So they destroy, like, the, the shoot or anything that destroys everything out. So this thing is just floating in orbit and it's a big old circle. And it's like. Was that Project Orion that I'm thinking of where you throw the nuke out the back? Or is Project Orion the one where you have the uh, thermonuclear cruise missile that irradiates the planet? There's a lot of them. There's a lot groups. of <laughs> this weird nuclear projects. Well, but yeah, yeah, it's the audacity of humans that throws off the aliens. It's like they're mm -hmm. they're firing a nuke at themselves. What do we do? Yeah, I guess it says something that I sympathize with humans being crazy. So I guess uh, we'll catch our favorite psychopath next time. And see what he gets I mean, up not to. Mine. I've already said it. Your character is pushing me away from liking the main characters. <laughs> And the only guy I actually enjoyed watching on there, Fat Hitler, is no longer in there. He got beaten up and mailed to the other side. Well, clearly you gotta be on the, on Porky's side then, because he's clearly never going to die in for an emotional beat. Who's Porky? <laughs> <laughs> or, or no, his name was Chip, wasn't it? Who's Chip? The the fat kid. Biscuit? Biscuit, there we go. Who All right, was the who the hell's Porky and Chip? You're just going through stereotypical <laughs> fat kid names now. It's like God, man. We we made fun of them for making fun of fat kids. Uh, Why would that be on Biscuit's continues. side? Biscuit, wait, I know I'm on the side of the two kids who stand in the middle of the road to lure non-paying attention motorists to their death. Oh well, we'll see them later too. They're going to stand in front of the spaceship and almost get run over. I mean, I'm on apparently not Gellerhorn, the sea name people's side, the one that we just watched gun down people in the streets. Yup. Because at least I know the motivation of that one character. Well, let's go ahead and see uh, who gives chase and what happens next time then. So, uh, this has been Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, this is Theta, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?